Hello, Pisces. Welcome to your December 2018 love reading. I'm Princess India, if you didn't know, but you guys are, like, first because you guys have the highest views from, like, a couple of days ago when I did the generals. Because <laughs> when I sat down to, like, do love, of course, I did my uh, birthday month cusp people first. But I was, like, thinking, I was, like, man, how am I going to do these? Because I was, like, it hasn't been long enough to have highest views. But I was, like, well, let's try it and see. I did, and Pisces has the highest views out of everyone. So, y'all wasn't playing. <laughs> y'all were, like, second from the bottom last time, but you guys legit were not playing. So, welcome back to the top of the list where you belong, Pisces. You know, this is what I'm used to from you guys. But anyway, this is your love reading for the month of December. Um, I have my assistant working on this whole raffle thing, so I guess I'm going to do a video or something. Something I'm going to do to let everybody know what to do, but I didn't want to hold up your love readings until we got all of that worked out. So details on that are coming. The discount code is still active. You can find that on a discount on a personal reading with me in the description box below this video. But we're going to go ahead and, uh, and everything else is down there too. So anything you need to know down there. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into you guys' love reading. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at you as well as your cross-watcher person for the month of December. We're going to do an overall energy, and we're going to look at desires, fears, feelings, lessons, things of the sort. And then after that, we're going to throw the dice of resonance, as usual. Ooh. Okay, let me move everything out of the way before I have an avalanche. But we're going to ask Spirit to give us clear and direct guidance for my Pisceans for the month of December, please, Spirit. Clear and direct guidance for Pisces. Anything they need to know in reference to their love lives, anything that will assist them in reference to their love lives, I ask that that be made clear in this reading, please, Spirit. I'll flank you on the volumes. So our overall energy is coming from the Romance Angels deck because it's just so awesome and pink and whatnot or whatever. So first card is for Pisces. Second card is for their Crosswatcher, please, spirit. I legit think the energy yesterday, I don't know what was going on in the sky, but man, I was so scatterbrained yesterday. Today, I feel like myself, thank goodness. One card for Pisces, please, Spirit. First card for Pisces, second card for the Cross Watcher. All right, first card for Pisces, you deserve love. You're lovable. Yes, you are. I think so. Know so. And believe so. Dagnado, son of a gun. Second card for your Cross Watcher. I'm going to turn that over in just a second. Sit these over yonder. And for you guys' messages, we're going to be using the Tarot of Sexual Magic. All of these cards are available below in my Amazon store. In the event you were curious. Clear and direct guidance, please, Spirit. Anything that Pisces needs to know for the month of December. Anything that will be of use to offer clarity to Pisces as well as their cross watcher, please, Spirit. I thank you in advance. Clear and direct guidance only, please, Spirit. One more time. Alright, let's see. First card that we have for Pisces is the Ace of Wands. Then we have the Nine of Swords. And then we have the Four of Pentacles. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I don't believe this. Let's 
so you're afraid to love? What's up with that? <laughs> <clears throat> Tell you how I have this break broken down. I'm looking at your desires in this partnership. I'm looking at your fears and I'm looking at any lessons that could be learned here, right? Nine of swords in your desires. It's like, it's a desire for closeness. It's wanting a person to come close. It's wanting to connect, but it's a fear of connecting. So it's a level of like holding back. So, but I would say that the fear is more interrelated in the loss of autonomy. You know what I'm saying? So this more or less could be someone, like say if you've been single for a while and you've gotten accustomed to being by yourself, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. God bless the truth. So anyway, this could be a person who's been single for a while and you've gotten accustomed to being by yourself. And now, whether this person is coming to your life or already, <clears throat> or this is just kind of tapping into your energy space in the event that there's someone coming into your life, it's like, a, it's like, I wouldn't necessarily say you're pushing them away, but it's like, I want you, but it's almost like a framework in which I could want you. So it's kind of like, I won't allow the person to take the lead too much. I won't open up too much because I don't want to be overtaken. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a, almost a fear. It's like a desire to get close to someone, but once the person gets close, that kind of freaks you out, even though it is what you want, because what's at the root of the fear is the loss of autonomy, right? Now, <laughs> in your fear position, which is interesting, with the Ace of Wands, you would think this would be something that would be in the desire position, but it's in the fear position, so it's a fear of combining with the person. But like I say, I can garner a lot from the nine of swords here. The whole thing is fear of losing yourself in a relationship, right? Your whole lesson in this whole experience, whether it is that you're dating someone now, you're in a relationship now, or, um, or this is someone you're going to meet, the whole thing that it is that you would gain from this is... Um, learning how okay so it's like you have boundaries but it's learning how to utilize boundaries in action so it's like knowing that middle ground of how to open up but not opening up too much to the point that you self-compromise because i feel like that's what's at the root of the fear here it's like being taken advantage of several times um in the past in relationships right and the thing that you've been working on this whole time while you've been by yourself is you know building up your worth building up your boundaries but it's the whole thing of like understanding it in theory but not in practice so the way that you understand it in practice is actually dating <laughs> and utilizing your boundaries and actions so the whole thing is is not approaching this from a very anxious, rigid kind of space. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to connect with a person. You know that you deserve love, but it's a fear of, I, I would say, like being dominated. You know what I'm saying? But in all of this, you're holding yourself back. You're holding yourself back to prevent from getting hurt, but you're also preventing yourself from experiencing passion and romance and being able to completely you know, not let go in the sense of opening up yourself like in totality to where you're vulnerable in a negative way. But it's like, you can't even really experience the beauty of what's coming to you or what you're in because it's a fear of being overtaken. And we already talked about <laughs> this in you guys' monthly reading. God, you have raccoon eyes? Jesus Christ. But anyway, but if you guys have not watched your monthly general, Everything I talked about in the Pisces overall energy reading for the month, all of that would be very applicable here because it's talking about this very strict regimen you guys have yourself on and it's trying to prevent yourself from getting hurt. But doing this in a love relationship, this is how you create that self-fulfilling prophecy of a person leaving because the person that you're with could end up taking this the wrong way. But we don't know if the person that you're dealing with actually is not the right kind of person. That's the reason why your guard's up. We're about to find that out. So your cross watch is overall energy. Trust. Hmm. This situation is calling for you to have faith. First card that we have oh, is the two of wands. Oh, never mind. 
next card that we have is the Knight of Swords. Mm. Mm. Next card that we have is the King of Wands. So, remember what I said? <laughs> remember what the, what I just said literally a second ago? We don't know if the reason why you're doing this is because the person that you're dealing with just ain't the right person? Well, their overall energy is trust. The situation is calling for you to have faith, right? But in their desires position, sweet baby Jesus, it's, it's a desire to dominate. You know what I'm saying? This is some dominatrix type stuff. It's almost like, okay, how would I put this? Misogyny. There's your word. It's misogyny. This is a person, okay, I have to tread really lightly on this. Okay, there with this particular person, he has a history of dominating women has gotten power out of that right and the thing that he fears the most is commitment talks of the future anything of the sort right a lesson for him is a level of vulnerability like what he's supposed to be getting out of this situation is learning what it's like for like two people to come together. And this is the thing that he fears the most. So this is almost like a catalyst kind of situation, right? Because it's like you've been taken advantage of before. So you fear opening up and won't really kind of go with the flow with this which I'm seeing is a good thing in this particular situation. So there's a level of you holding back, right? What he's used to is a person. So, and this is very interesting. So, okay. What it is you guys used to do in relationships, which is kind of being fully open, whatever you want, like, yes, honey type of thing. It's like, this is what this person is used to, right? But it's like, you're not giving him that. But And, and the thing is, is, like he fears that. So the thing is, I want to dominate you, but you feel like a superpower all your own, so you won't allow yourself to be dominated. Because <clears throat> the thing is, you fear losing your autonomy. So congratulations, Pisces. It's almost as if this is like overcoming codependency in a sense. So it's like, you no longer need another person to identify you as you, because you're you. And your fear of committing. So it's almost like both of you are afraid of the same goddamn thing. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the ace of wands that's in your fear position, right? So it's like you're afraid of uh, like the whole two becoming one, like being in union. You know what I'm saying? That freaks you out, right? But... Uh, I don't know if y'all, I mean, if y'all have had sex, I think the sex is so good that that scares you too. Pisces, just throwing that out there. But anyway, <clears throat> but with them, they fear commitment and being like bound when it comes to like the future. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, wow. This might be, oh God. Look, let me tell you something. Let me get to that in a second. But anyway. So with them, it's like, so you guys are fearing the same thing in two different ways, right? So I wouldn't even say y'all are fearing the same thing in two different ways. It's like y'all are fearing the same thing, right? Because they're used to being in control in relationships and people bowing down to them. You're used to being the one who bows down, but you're not about that life no more because you feel like, you know, I do deserve love. I realized by myself that I do deserve love, but then I also realized I like being by myself and I kind of like how my life is. I don't want nobody coming in and telling me who to be and how to do things. I'm really not feeling that, right? So your thing is you don't want to be anyone's doormat. 
they don't want to be anyone's doormat, but they're used to being in control. You're used to being controlled, <laughs> right? But it's almost like, it's almost like, like this situation, like if you guys were to realize from each other that y'all both want the same thing, like you don't want to be dominated, nor do you want to dominate. You know what I'm saying? Like that the fact that both of y'all want to be two autonomous people in a relationship, right? It's almost as if you both would learn the same lesson from this. Like both of you would get what it is that you want from each other. If that makes sense. Yeah. Aww. I just love this card. The King of Wands is so doggone. It's all embracing her and all that stuff. Yeah, man. It's almost like um how this could work out if you guys both got on the same page and realized that neither one of you is interested in overtaking the other one would legit be the like a real commitment like a, a real stable commitment of two autonomous people who are not coming into the relationship for codependent reasons so to speak you know what i'm saying because i feel like he even realized like even though he was used to being the person who dominated people in relationships it's like that really wasn't so it's almost like, okay, say if he was like a ladies man and dated like a whole bunch of people that really wasn't serving him because it's a lot he was losing in the process. So it's almost like him dealing with a bunch of different chicks is the realization that he's lost himself in that. Like him being so like, you know, irrational, not having self-control. It's like he lost more than he gained from being that way. And I feel like he saw that. So it's a level of him, the same as you, of him wanting to protect his own autonomy. Now he's being told, or she, you know, because it can go vice versa, but um, like he's being told to trust the situation and to have faith in it because I feel like if you guys take things slow over time, you will both see each other in each other's eyes. And this is where I'm going to segue in this whole epiphany that I had today. It was something that I had wrote down on like the 15th of November. And I was reading it to my Pisces bestie earlier. And then I realized that above what it is I had wrote down, I had something in there about Sagittarius and Jupiter, like a transit or something of the sort. And I ended up having this epiphany of like this whole song and dance, especially from the last two days, but I didn't know it kind of stemmed back to, um, to November uh of this whole song and dance astrologically with this whole piscean energy and this sagittarius energy but it's almost as if like when i was talking to her it's like this whole narrative came out right so i said it's almost like i can make sense because i've been talking a lot about this whole energetic battle between like light and dark and this whole like all these forces and stuff that i've been feeling but this whole sagittarius and pisces song and dance <laughs> I like, cause like I said, y'all, I don't know jack about astrology. I read energy. That's what I do. But the way that it makes sense in my head is a narrative. So it's almost like if I were to, if I were to put what I'm feeling or sensing or reading an energy sense into a narrative, it would be that like the primordial mother and father of all would be Pisces is the mom and Sagittarius is the dad, right? And they're polar opposites of each other. And it's like, you know, mom is like this anchor and like, you know, like the empress, you know what I'm saying? And she's just sitting here being all pretty and fruitful and things of the sort. And it's like the Sagittarius dad is like on this quest to find truth. So he's consistently inconsistent in the fact that he doesn't have roots anywhere because, you know, it's like he's a resident of everywhere. So he's going around, you know, to and fro seeking the answers to all the truth. 
of the matter, right? So it's almost as if one day, which is what's happening now, he passes like mommy Pisces, so to speak. Um, the way that he's passed her seven t- several times before, because this is someone like when he needed something, he would go to her here and there. You know what I'm saying? And it would be like a good friend that would always give advice. But it's like, you know, uh, she would give encouragement to give him enough strength to keep seeking what he was seeking. But then one day he comes to her and it's as if the blinders are taken off his eyes and he realizes that the truth that he sought is her. Like she is the answer to every question he's ever asked of why or what or who or when or where. Everything exists within her. And it's like the realization of like everything that I've searched for has been right in front of me this entire time. I have no idea what that has anything to do with. But the energy that I'm sensing, that's how it makes sense to me. So I think like why a lot of things are falling away and why a lot of things are coming together and people are settling in and taking these different journeys and pathways and so on and so forth is because it's almost like a marriage that's happening in the ethereal realm between these two very um, different energies. It's, it's almost as if the realization that each of them are the key, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, to the lock. They've searched for many years to find the key to this lock and they've helped each other look for keys. But suddenly they realize that both of them were what the other was looking for all along, but it never dawned on them until this moment because it wasn't in the passion. It wasn't in the the sexual attraction. It wasn't in the physical attraction. It was in the essence, like the realization of what true love really is. True love is there. True love is, is loyal. It's, it's consistent. It fulfills a need. It helps you grow. It helps you be better than you are. You know what I mean? On both sides. And it's the realization that the other, like, it's the realization that I'm not lacking on both sides, but it's like, you're the ultimate compliment to me in a sense. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not lacking, but it's just having you here. It inspires me to keep going. And I was telling her, it reminded me of a song by Frank Ocean. It's called Sweet Life. And in the song he says, um, So why see the world when you have the beach, right? So it's almost like, why does one continue this quest and this search for the answers, you know? When, um, like, or for truth, when truth is right in front of you. It's like, instead of me picking pieces, it's like, this person is everything here. And it's an unlimited source because it's a never-ending truth. Because this person is a never ending well of inspiration. It doesn't get old. It's like the well that never goes dry. You know, it's like a, um, a thirst that's forever quenched, you know, because it's like Pisces being the living water, right? Now this can be interpreted in a sense of love, like romantic love, but I'm sensing this on a very deep spiritual level. It's almost like the two facets of oneself (laughs) or realizing that there's no fracture. You know what I'm saying? It's almost as if you look at the yin and yang symbol and if you were to imagine it constantly spinning because the one is looking for the other, but the, the realization, oh my gosh, like the poem that I wrote. Oh my goodness. Why? See, Pisces, y'all be... Y'all, I don't know what it is with y'all energy, but it's like y'all give me the greatest freaking epiphanies, like right while I'm in your energy. This is insanity. I hope y'all are digging this. Because I'm legit having like a whole like download while I'm talking and y'all reading right now. This is crazy. Where is my poem? Here it is. I never knew what love was until I found what I didn't know I was looking for in your eyes. 
It was then that I realized you don't complete me. You are me and I you. It's just like that. <laughs> and that's what I mean about like the two of them constantly passing each other in life and coming to the realization, like looking up and being like, what am I looking for when you've been here all along? Because you know how with yin and yang, like there's a little bit of yin and yang and a little bit of yan and ying. And it's like them searching for this missing piece and coming to the realization that you've always been in possession of it. Like you've never, you've never not been there. You've always been here, you know? And I feel like the translation of that is on several different levels. It's with the individual self of realizing I was never lacking anything. I have always been all that I've been looking for. So I've been on this quest trying to find this missing piece, but there was never a missing piece right on one facet so that would be like with the i guess the masculine energy right it's this quest to find and realizing you're already in possession of right for the feminine energy it would be more of i've stood strong i've stood as an anchor i've stood as a pillar i've been consistent in hopes of you coming home to me to realize that it's me but it's her realizing that it's not me waiting to be chosen. I'm already chosen because I'm all that there is. You know what I mean? I am life. I am abundance. You know, I am fruitful. And you know, everything I perceived myself to have been lacking, I'm not. I am all things, right? And it's almost as if when the two come to this realization within the self, and kind of like I said in somebody else's reading, it's rubbing your eyes and waking up. <laughs> like the scales fall off the moment you realize the truth about yourself and that's when your counterpart manifests and you realize that they've been there on your peripheral the whole freaking time which is what i said in your general that turned into a love reading i said this already why are we doing this and it's probably a sagittarius person i don't know <laughs> but whatever's going on I don't know if anybody knows astrology and could explain that to me, but it, and I had this epiphany on the phone with my best friend who was a Pisces and she like was flabbergasted. But another thing I'm looking at is like, I'm seeing the little, what is that? The, the archer bow thing. And then I see it here again. And then I'm seeing the little arrow again here. It's a lot of these same themes that are showing up. And then especially with all of the, this fire energy, a lot of wands. So I don't know what that's about. But I sense that energetically, but I don't understand a, astrology like that. So I can't really align it with like whatever is going on in the calendar in the sky right now. But whatever this is, dude, this is like a great awakening. And I've said this. <laughs> I'm in, I, like, I feel like I'm interpreting this in these readings on a micro level of like person to person. But this is like a major ethereal shift that is happening. Like, and I, I don't know, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is like the great awakening and consciousness that everyone is talking about or has been expecting. Like, I don't know what that is, but it's like, and like I said with 2019, dude, this is not a joke. And it may sound like I'm being really extra right now, but I promise you that I'm not. Cause <laughs> like, this is so serious. Something really major is about to happen on a grand scale and it's about to be beautiful because I have never sensed anything like whatever it is that's happening behind the veil right now, dog. I don't know what it is, but something of like, something on a grand scale is happening. I don't know what it is, but something on a grand scale is happening and I honestly feel like, I don't know, dude. This is going to be life-altering in a very good way. See what happens when I be planning y'all depths and things? I'm an earth sign, okay? It's supposed to be really superficial. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to throw out the dice of resonance. Since the freaking primordial mother Pisces wants to give all of her children, you know, this deep philosophical reading with your marriage to Sagittarius and whatnot proverbially speaking, I assume. 
But we're going to throw out the dice of resonance. So if you guys want to formulate a yes or no question, you're more than welcome to because this is the 12 zodiac signs, different rules a person can play in your life and qualifiers of, you know, where the sign placement is. And then you can ask a yes or no question. The answers that you can get are yeses and nos or time sensitive um, answers. So in the event a time sensitive answer comes out, take that as a yes in the time frame in which that'll happen. But I don't interpret these. This is just, you know, something fun for you guys. Okay, we got Leo. We got Libra. We have friend. We have yes, and in a few, few weeks. And then we have rising. So the person can either be a Leo rising or a Libra rising or any variation of it. The answer to your question is yes in a few weeks. And the word is friend. So that has been your December 2018 love reading, Pisces. Good old primordial mother. I love your face. You guys are the bomb. I'll see you sooner than later. Deuces.